Welcome back to our mission to Mars on Farming Simulator 22, episode 2, with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, it's September, here on the colony. Still on my own at the moment. I've been having all sorts of conversations since the first episode, and then we had a load of mods drop, then we had two maps drop, oh, it's been crazy. Um, I had a weird weekend, I didn't post a single video, I did a little bit of prep work yesterday, that was Sunday. Um, I was doing some tidying, and I got something in my eye, and my entire eye swelled shut. I couldn't see a thing out of it. It's been stinging, it's been agony, I've washed it, I've, I've put eye drops in, I've been cleaning it out, and... I'm sitting here now and it's 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 misty it's really weird right on the inside it's like normally when my hay fever plays up and it all my eyes sort of get puffy it's like that but oh blimey what a, it's yeah, been strange anyway the people I've been talking to about here and the colony I've had all sorts of ideas all sorts of suggestions all sorts of suggestions on vehicles and machinery and equipment I want to give a couple of shout outs um two or three actually farmer envoy extreme messaged me and had done some testing, I mean some pretty extreme testing, because I had people saying to me, do you even know if it's possible to achieve the goals that Farmer Bob has set out in the 20 years that you've been given? I said, I honestly don't know. I'm just going on what is said in the um, description of the of the map um, for the challenge. I, I, I haven't tested it yet. That's the whole point of doing this series, to so have a go. Uh, Farmer Envoy Extreme went away and had a go at the tree planting, to plant 10,000 trees. Now over there, We've got a load of trees. There's 6,000. Uh, 6, There's 226 trees over there. Uh, he planted trees. And even having cut those trees down first, those 226, he only managed to plant 7,840 trees. So quite a way short of the 10,000 required. So, a discussion then ensued on the Discord server regarding how that could be dealt with how that could be worked upon and the theory is that potentially you would have to plant as many as you can for example 7840 and then cut a load down and then replant so technically you will have planted 10,000 trees now i'm going to say this <laughs> out loud i understand the conversation i understand the concept but on my floor is lava floor is not lava series um, I've only cut down so far 1,100 trees. Now, even... Now, I know I was doing that staying off the ground. But even on the ground, cutting down and processing over 1,000 trees takes a long time. So if you're looking at 7,840 trees, that means you've got over 2,000... What is it? 2,160 trees. You would have to cut down to then replant to get to the 10,000 that you need to do. That's a lot of that's a lot of trees to cut down. So I, I don't know if it's achievable. I, honestly, I don't know. Um, we're over here because our equipment and machinery should have been delivered. I have repositioned, we got up on a ladder, and um, <laughs> we have repositioned our flags. They should be, it says they should be okay. That one still looks like over there. That's, it, it wasn't sticking out. Anyway, bear with me a second. Okay, I was just checking something actually. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get, if, if we jump back in here, look. I think I'm going to put some normal clothes on. Much as, much as I love, I love the horse superhero space type suit. We're in a dome, we're protected, we're fine, everything's okay. We're in a, a, that only needs to be put on when we're getting a shuttle ride, I would suggest. So I think what I might do is um, get my regular clobber back on at some point. So all my stuff should have been delivered, and it should be here. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So the little tanker I bought, that's in addition to the one we got with the water. So that'll be for moving oils and things like that. Which we can't get to yet, that's one of the jobs we've got to do. And then deliveries from the shuttle, the spaceport. So I'm just curious, these I think stay all the time. Because I was, I went into my menu and I thought, oh, I need to remove those, but I've got, they're off, look. Strange. I can't remember if they were on before. Yeah, potentially. So, right, what we ordered then. Rollers. We've got our rollers. 
these can be split open into a triple so that one will open those two will go on i think these are five so four meters so that will give us 12 meters that's pretty cool uh right so then we've got there's our wheel loader we ordered. Now, talking to the wheel loader, next shout out, Rob. Rob messaged me, I mean, a few people messaged me. There were a lot of comments as well. People offering, when I said, if anyone wants to send me anything up, up to, the, to the colony, I had loads of people suggesting all bits of equipment, things they were going to send me. Rob sent me a list of um, electric vehicles, telehandlers, to, which actually kind of makes sense. It, it would be better up here, I guess, wouldn't it, to have electric vehicles. But we've gone for this to start off with. We've got a bucket on the front, 5,000 litres. Um, that's our bit of equipment. Now, what we've then got is this. This is the Massey Ferguson 8S, but this is the lunar, this is the lunar version. Did I mention it in the last episode? I can't remember, but um, at Agrotechnica, this is what it looked like. In, in 2019, before the 8S was released, this was what was sat on the, the sort of the Massey Ferguson stand. Um, and I got to sit in it, which was superb. But anyway, that's the lunar version. We've got our plough on the back. But what I've got on the front now, this, did I mention this? This is a wheel loader attachment that goes on a three-point link, but enables you to put wheel loader attachments onto a three-point link of a vehicle. Um, so I thought, if I grab that, for moving maybe some rocks about, stuff like that, potentially, that'll be for moving gravel and stuff like that. So we've got a load of ploughing to do. I'm going to try if I can. Oh, hang on. Where's me? Well, we're going to do a trailer, aren't we? Let's get the first one. The lighting on this is superb. I mean, I could put the beacons on. It's that strange thing, isn't it? With rules and regulations um, regarding health and safety, if I'm the only person on the colony, do I still need to put my beacons on to warn people that we're working, that we're about, that we're moving? Um... Do I, do I still need to? I don't know. It's an interesting one, isn't it? So what I'm going to do initially, I'm going to clear the rocks away from here, try and clear the, the stone away so we can get up to the um, the oil drilling so we can move some oil uh, and then I'm going to get onto my ploughing. I'm going to get onto this. Will I get onto the seeding today? I don't know. I'll tell you what we need to see. We need to bring a trailer over to put the stone into. The great thing with those crushable rocks, you don't actually need the rock crusher, but um, you can if you want to. It's entirely up to you. I've been pondering stuff. I've been pondering this. I mean, this is a, 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 a sort of superficial, a, a segue idea, but but pondering. I do this every now and again, don't I? Um, so Heavy Metal Gaming messaged me to say about... A lot of people messaged me after I did the map tour on Evergreen Valley about going on and doing a Let's Play on that. Um, and they were saying about... And Heavy Metal Gaming said that you could do a transition of how you got here, how you got to the colony. Because I've already done the first episode, so this is the second one. So it's going to be a kind of a flashback. How did this happen? How did I end up here? It's a superficial thing. It's just something, you know. Um, and we were on Ravenport. And I was working, and well, let's go to the flashback now. So there I was, quite happily, trundling along. Well, say trundling. I was doing the bailing contract that would give me the quick, quick bail here on Ravenport. Haven't even been here 24 hours. Chugging away I was. Had almost completed the fields with bales. We were going to make a tidy bit of money. And I get a call from Carlos. Down at Carlos Reliable Motors, tipping me the wink that I need to get back to the farm immediately. Something is wrong. So, of course, I panic. I don't know what's going on. Could be a fire. Could be someone's turned up to repossess the big bud that I just sold. I mean, could be anything, couldn't it? So, at this point, I decide, you know what? I'm going to have to leave everything where it is. Stop what I'm doing. I say it leave everywhere it is and stop what I'm doing. Obviously, get the next bale out because, you know me, I can't leave it in the baler. I need to get back and see what's occurring. I've left my van at um, Carlos's and uh, we'll get back to the farm. So, with worries and woes racing through my head at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. 
We've only just got here. And it could all be coming to a tragic end. So, I head back. And this is what I discover. So immediately, I'm thinking, it's got to be a fire. It's got to be something serious. Fire department, police department, the sheriff's here. I've sent everybody at this point. We've got forest services. We've got the German fire brigade. Everybody's here. I'm not quite sure why. And then when I turn the corner and see the army vehicles, I start to get a little bit concerned. A brief conversation ensues at this point, and this is where I find out I've been chosen. I don't know why. I still don't know why I was chosen with immediate effect, but not to worry. The government, I say not to worry. It's funny, isn't it? Not to worry. The government is going to take over the running of the farm. They're going to get a farmer in. They're going to get someone to run it while I'm gone. I don't know how long I'll be gone. I don't know if I'll be back. But I'm going up there. And so... I'm bundled into, I say bundled into, <laughs> the passenger seats of a, mir mil a, military, a military vehicle, and off we go. And that's how it happened. As simple as that. They just came and got me. They came and grabbed me, and off we went. Um, but thinking about that... Oh, there goes the show. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that. That, on a, on a much deeper level, that kind of how did... How did it happen? How did I get here? And I've just been thinking about life, generally. The channel. I was thinking a lot about Lama. Um, I've been talking to the guys about FarmCon coming up. FarmCon24. 
We've been doing some planning and booking. I was just thinking about the YouTube journey and how I got to this point and, you know, and how fortunate I have been and lucky in places and, you know, don't get me wrong, I've said before, there's a lot of hard work goes into what you do. There's a lot of, you know, people will argue what hard work is and I've, I've said it many, many times before. Hard work can be physical work, can be manual labour, can be working on a building site, can be actual farming, can, you know, you know, I've always said that armed forces, um, emergency services, all those guys, I mean, you just can't fault anything they do. So what I should be able to do with this, I can adjust it and we can, it does have straps as well, but I don't know how well it's going to grab stuff. Oh, has that grabbed all of those? Will it be able to lift them? That might be too heavy for it, I think. That doesn't want to lift now. I think I've got too many there. Can we just grab that one? Let's grab that. No, it's still grab the one next to it. Whoa, too heavy, too heavy. Right, let's just grab that. That's better. Let's get out of the way. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are jobs that are hard because they're physically hard. There are jobs that are mentally demanding. There are jobs that are both physically and mentally demanding. You've got a lot of people that spend a lot of their lives working in computing. In, you know, when you look at the world and how computing and computers and the internet and everything has come on, um, there are people that still have incredibly hard jobs but work in offices. There's nothing wrong with working in an office. You could be doing data analysis. You could, I mean, whatever it is you're doing, it could be computer programming, it could be anything. And whether a job is hard or not is subjective. It depends on what you do and what you consider to be a hard job. And then you look at other people and think, well, they've got it easy. They've got uh, their job isn't hard. They're, you know, like I said before. And again, going back to the mental health stuff that I talk about a lot. Um, it doesn't matter what job you do. There will be days. There will be times when your job will be and feel incredibly difficult whatever it might be incredibly stressful it doesn't always have to be physically demanding for it to be a difficult job a hard job or a stressful job so that kind of thing of you know i know i'm kind of i'm doing that reactionary thing again um but it's um yes i i'm you know i'm lucky enough to do this you know which is amazing I'm lucky enough that I get to reach out to people. And I think Lama was a big turning point for me for that, for getting to, to meet so many people. And, and, and I've met so many incredible people and interacted with so many incredible people. And I get to interact with people, not always necessarily one-to-one, -one, but by doing what I'm doing like this. Then there are people that are psychiatrists and psychologists and do, you know, do it for a living. I'm not qualified in any way, shape or form. But the amount of people that have messaged me over the past few years to say I've helped them through difficult times, I've helped them, you know, you kind of look at all the facets of, of what it is you do and you start kind of almost making a list. You suddenly realise just how much goes into what you do. And that's every job, not just talking about mine. Like I say, anyway, it's, it's that kind of, I don't know, all off the back of that simple thing that Heavy Metal Gaming said of just do... Um, do a little bit on your video maybe about how you got to the colony how did you get here how did you get here? and that then set off this thing in my head of how did i get here it's, it's so much more than that you know anyway enough enough of that oh last one i want to give a shout out to actually what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go and get the um trailer i'm gonna start loading some of these in i'm gonna get that gravel moved I want to get some plowing at least started. Once the plowing's all done, then the next episode we'll get on to get our planting done. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to plow these fields together, but I am going to plow them together in sections. And again, I've had loads of people messaging me with all different suggestions of how to do it. I do like this tractor. This thing is lovely. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go and get a trailer. But yeah, the last shout I want to do um, is... Actually, there's some, there's some others, actually. Um is for, well it's for Ethan predominantly, but Greg is Ethan's dad, and Greg messaged me, and I was saying about the animal pens the animal domes, and you can't put anything in there, you can't take anything out of there, you can't landscape you can't add grass into them, because it won't let you in build mode inside there and I said it all just looks a little bit flat a little bit kind of um, sterile I guess, um, that's the other thing I noticed as well, across a lot of the fields you know when I said about that meteor impact 
we've got a lot of rock and stone across fields and as we get to them when I was doing the um, fertilizing we had a lot of stones that we're going to remove off a of field so as we go around and do our plowing we'll probably dra end up dragging them out of the way but anyway so um, Greg's son Ethan said well is it possible to go into the domes and plow can you go in and plow the ground and can you plant in there so they tested it and you can so what they did oh I shouldn't have even you know what I'm going to take this back I've got my agri power haven't I on the trailer we'll grab that um, so they did they tested it and they planted grass and they grew grass in there um, so Ethan awesome job mate what a, what a cracking idea I've had a lot of people recently um, Stuart I've mentioned a few times Stuart has been doing all sorts of testing on expeditions and on farming sim and he'll message me and say how do you thought about this and how do you thought about that and like I said so many times before there are so many things that just because I do this day in day out it doesn't mean I think of absolutely everything it, you know I've, um, I've, I've, I've probably talked about this before when I was an instructor with the air cadets and um, we would do leadership tasks, command tasks, training for that kind of thing. That just because you are in charge, just because you are the person that everyone's looking at, it doesn't mean you know everything. And it's always good when you're utilizing, operating with a team, a group of people, to utilize everyone's experiences, everyone's knowledge, to have the arrogance to walk into a situation and say, well, I'm in charge, therefore I must know everything, therefore you will do what I say, and disregard other people's ideas is ludicrous. Just don't do it. Um, that's just a kind of management tip, you know. <laughs> that's just standard. Um, so when people say to me, how did you talk about that? And I've like, you know what? No, I hadn't. And it's brilliant. It's genius. And I've said a few times over the last few episodes and various different things, when people have reached out, some of the ideas that people have had are so elegantly simple but not necessarily something you would think of so thank you to all those guys anyway i'm gonna go and grab this tractor and bring it back i'm gonna get some we're gonna get this done don't worry i drove all the way over here drove all the way back thinking the agri power was over by the silos and it wasn't it was right here wasn't it <laughs> i had it right here by the green areas oh we've got some stuff already we can start sending stuff back We've got strawberries and we've got tomatoes. I suppose we are a month on, aren't we? So let's get some stone and stuff into this. Get that moved out of the way. This, mm, this is not a big fan of these trailers. I don't think I can adjust this hitch either. I was wondering if I could move the hitch up and down, but I don't think I can. No. Because those wheels aren't sat particularly well, I need... Um, slightly different hitch really uh, I don't like swivel hitch trailers just go a little bit slower that's one of the easiest thing so anyway yeah that's all right I think I'm gonna have to order some more liquids I can get stuff delivered in barrels um, like stacks of barrels right for water uh, fuel if we can get anything produced with regard to that we should be okay I can get all the rocks moved first. So I've used these before and other things, but just thought it worked quite well. Okie dokie, so what we'll do, look at that. Ho. Stunning. Stunning, right. Shall I? I don't know if I'll... Oh, I can't lift up with that, can I? Oh, this might be a problem. I need to... Oh, that's a wheel loader. I can put that onto that. Of course I can. Of course I can. This hasn't got straps, has it? No. Right. So what we'll do... Drop that down, he says. Drop that down there. Drop that off there. Get it high enough up. Let's 
So I'm going to get all the stones loaded in. And then we'll get the uh, the rock that's on the floor, the smaller stuff. Didn't quite get all of that, did we? There we go. I think for the time being, if we do come across any of these stones, rocks, on the fields, we'll just push them to one side for the time being. Mind you, that's going to be easier said than done if we want to plough out between fields. Starting recording much later than I normally do, um, which is not good because my eye was quite bad this morning. I had to bathe it, and um, by the time I got out here and could see, it, <laughs> could see well enough out of it to do anything. Oh dear! So, I don't know what it was. So something, bit of grit or something got in my eye. Anyway, right, as I said, we'll get the last of these bits done. I don't know how much gravel is going to be there. But at least we've got access up to the top. I want to, next episode as well, we'll get some seeding done. I want to start planting trees. I'm also going to plough, I think, around the outer edges of the map. Not necessarily the top ring, but the, I'm going to try trees around the top ring. But I think the bottom ring um, for grass. So we can... Um, hopefully start our grass work uh, that was the other thing as well who was it reached out there have been so many people like I said that were messaging me um, when I said about feed mixers and doing Tomix ration and that kind of stuff because the um, cows have got feed robots haven't they so for all the people that messaged about feed robots I completely forgot that I have got feed robots so all I've got to do is just produce the um, the various different things that they can operate now that's that is going to require mineral feed whereas if you use a um if you use a mixer wagon whether it be a, a tow behind or um another version words <laughs> self-propelled i was thinking propelled but self-propelled um you can often get away with just doing a mix of silage and um, hay, silage hay and straw you don't always have to have the, the mineral feed but when it's the feed robots I don't think the robot will run on the hour maybe it will, I've never tried it um, unless you've actually got the mineral feed in there that's quite heavy actually I think I'm going to be looking for um, something, a different trailer, maybe something a bit more a space frame, space age technology, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just 
Yeah, I'm not, not vibing with this at the moment. Anyway, so first of all, load of stone. We're going to bring it over here. So this is the um, Universal Crusher. The M Pro Loop one. I've never used this before. It has been suggested that I give it a go. So that's what we're going to do. Now again with this, I'm going to have to mark it on the ground because I can't remember which way around. It might be the other side. I don't know if it requires water as well, actually. I don't know. Uh, lime and ore production does require water too. Okay. So stone coming in for that one. That one requires limestone. Do we produce limestone? Sand produces a whole load of stuff. Do we produce sand out of that? No, that's weird. Where do we get the sand and stuff from then? Limestone and sand. We do are oh, going to produce iron ore, gravel, gold ore, and copper ore. What do I do with those? Electrical charge air. Why is that not running? <laughs> out of space. That's kind of ironic, really, isn't it? Oh, that's the fuel refinery. What do you mean out of space? Oh, uh, can we set it to selling? I don't know if we can, can we? I don't need electric charge for anything else at the moment. Didn't even realise. Okay, so we are going to need to bring some water over as well. Uh, where's my... Oh, there we go. How's that doing? What? 16,000 litres of crude oil? <laughs> this is not just normal crude oil. This is Mars crude oil, which is even better than Marks and Spencer's crude oil. <laughs> do Marks and Spencer's do crude oil? Probably not. Right, so I'm going to need to bring some water over here. Anyway, right. Uh, so on my way back, um, I was saying about uh, shout outs, honourable mentions. Um, my. Again, I don't do this as often as I should have done it or should be doing it. But a massive, massive thank you and shout out to Greg, Stephen, Robert, um, Jason, Felix, James, Peter, Nicholas and Tony, I think. Is that everybody? I think that's everyone this month. Thank you. You guys are awesome. You have helped me um, and anyone that views, watches, uh, super chats, any of those things. Um, super stickers, those kind of things. It's 7.40. The last of the stone is off there. It's cleared the rock, the stone. It's all done. Uh, I've taken, I think we've got 50, 55,499 litres of stone over there and some more to go. Now, we're going to be generating some more. And the only downside to the wolf, the old Agri Power, I'm going to keep this on the front of this because if we do come across these stones, I can push them out of the way or pick them up or vice versa or whatever. Um, is the rear three point on this? Is a three point. It will hook up, but it won't raise or lower. So for things like ploughing, it doesn't. I was going to use it for doing the ploughing, but it doesn't work particularly well. So we're on to the ploughing. Now the ploughing is going to bring up stones. I've got my uh, autonomous tractor there with a rock picker. So we're going to be picking those up. And I've decided I'm going to expand these fields out. I'm going to do these three. I'm going to do them in threes, basically. So I'm going to do these three, and I'm going to extend them out this way, this way, probably I might curve it round here and out to here. I'm leaving the big gap between there. These three fields are going to go together. I'm going to extend them out this way a little bit, and I'm going to extend out this way a little bit. Then I'm going to do that three, that three, and that three. This three, I might be able to extend a little way out this way, but these, this one I'll be able to go this way, and these will all go that direction. So we should have some bigger fields. Then, like I said, grass, I'm hoping to do this whole section around the back here, maybe grass all around here, uh, potentially, I don't know, maybe in around some of this, I might just put the grass down. Because I'm then thinking trees, trees 10,000, I don't know whether or not I'll get 10,000 trees. This whole top section here, all the way around there, all the way around here, all the way around here. If I can put trees in on that top layer, we'll be all right. But like I said, I'm, I'm, it's always difficult to gauge, isn't it? So these fields all need ploughing anyway. Now, do I need the gap to be this big between fields? 
I don't want workers to accidentally go between, which is what often happens. I might extend a little bit. Just a little bit. So thinking if I come back to I want to come I mean we can come a fair we can extend these a fair old way, can't we? I'm thinking coming all the way back. We could go even further than this hard standard if we wanted to. But I'm going to go from here. And then, like I say, I'll, I'll use the curvature and the areas around each one. Are we getting stones coming up? And they said we're ploughing. They're not very big, are they? We are getting some, I guess. Uh, well, they're all right, I guess. Not, you know, not the most exciting of stones. <laughs> <laughs> on the scale of stone excitement so as you can imagine as with all these processes hopefully because I'm changing the ground state once I've ploughed I might be able to fertilise again so I can get both fertilising states done before I even put a crop in the ground see what I might do is I don't, I don't want to overextend the main fields too much and then take away ground that I could use for grass. So this whole section off to my left, I might grass that. I'm just trying to think of grassing as much as I can. Just so I've got plenty, I won't have to worry for the animals. If it gets to a point where I've got more than I need for feeding cows, sheep, that kind of stuff, then I can always convert those grass fields back. I can plow them back out again and then we can put something else in them. So we've got a lot of seeding to do. I mean, a lot. How far this way do we reckon we can come? Well, as far as that, it's going to be our border. And then we're going to be getting close to the solar plant there. So I reckon that. I don't know whether or not, because if, if we are going to run it autonomously, where the rock picker, I've always found rock pickers can be a little bit, sometimes they'll pick the rocks no problem, sometimes they won't, sometimes they'll go back over the same bits they've done before, it can be really frustrating but we'll see, if I do want to do grass all around the outside how far do I extend this out or do I extend it out at all? Maybe an extra couple of plough widths, potentially. Isn't it funny when you've got this much to do? I'm now thinking this may be a six metre plough, but this is going to take some time. So if I go out to about there, I'm just eyeballing it. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm, I'm just it's just how I'm feeling at the time. I know I say this a lot, but as you can imagine, this is going to take some time. And the fields don't have to be straight. They are already, but I am going to contour these like now. I'm going to come past that bit here. And I'm going to bring it round. I 
I couldn't go over the red. It, 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 no, that red dust is just there. That's just the border around where the buildings were built. It, it doesn't have to uh, stay like that. But I'll leave myself a bit of room. So, first field nearly edged out. We go back to our map. You'll see now how much difference we'll have made on that. And they'll get cracking on the others. I still haven't decided what my six main crops are going to be, but we are going to need a variety. I don't know how this is all going to pan out, you know, it's... It is all very pie in the sky. So a little bit of time has passed and I need <laughs> I need some respite from ploughing. <laughs> I'm hoping the electricity that's been produced, you know, I had all that electricity and I set it to sell, our money bumped up a little bit. So I'm hoping that money, whether it be monthly, hourly, whatever, will cover worker costs. Our first worker is here, but we are going autonomous with this. I'm going to get some rock picking done. I'm just going to start off doing this. I'm not going to put you through the <laughs> the heartache of doing this because it's going to take quite some time. But what I want to show you, if we go to here, these are what our fields look like now. If I go across to hot spots and then soil composition, you will see where I've extended, where the original fields are. So these, this is ploughed out completely. I've done that. I'm now into this next section. So I, what I did was went around with the tractor. I've extended all the fields first. Now I'm going to go over and where it says it requires needs ploughing, I'm going to get the ploughing done on what were the existing fields. So if we go back again, you'll now see that we've, we've extended out this way on that one and filled in the gaps. We extended out that way. You saw me do all that one. So this one we've extended out this way, a little way, and out to the ends. I've left a gap there. This one I extended either side a little bit and either end. And then this one you can see has gone a little bit further. I've just extended where I've got the space to. This is where that crater is, the meteor impact. So I won't be extending anything there. But then we go back to that again. You'll see it's all stones. We've got a load to remove and I've got ploughing to get done. That's going to take quite a bit of time. And like I said before, my plan is grassing all here, probably around the back of here, probably around here, maybe this section. Maybe I might even do round behind here as well, round behind all the animal pens. That would make sense as well, wouldn't it? And maybe in them. That, like I say, awesome, Ethan. Cracking idea. If I grass inside those as well, that gives me grass I can cut. And then trees around the outside. If I don't have enough room for trees, I can always then put plant trees maybe around the very edge or something. I want to look at planting options as well because I'm sure there's that. Is there a, is that was an FS19 or 22? The Damcon triple frame for putting three Damcons on it. Did it go from PL75 to PL10s, whatever it was, so you could run three at a time, which would speed things up quite significantly. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a start on, um, on this. I suppose what I should have done, what I could have done, was that I wouldn't need workers. If I put this 
on the ploughing, that can run autonomously. I don't need a worker whilst I'm being charged for it. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. That makes far more sense. I'm still going to get charged. Like I said, money's not really, say, not as relevant. Of course it's relevant. But if, if I haven't necessarily got... Yeah, that makes more sense. Let's, let's have this... Autonomous. Slaved to my wrist pad. That is so bizarre, but so cool. Maybe that's the answer. If I just use all those for the time being, every time we have to hire a worker, it's robotic, isn't it? If we do get workers for other things, from, I mean, realistically, I say realistically, maybe we have a couple of maintenance engineers, that kind of stuff. A lot of stuff being computerised. A lot of the factories, facilities can run off computer systems, but will require maintenance crews, people to just keep a check on things, potentially. Um, but yeah, it was suggested as well to put in some housing for um, for workers. Which potentially, if we cut a few trees down, we could build, or we can get them. I, I was just looking for some kind of little, like hab, some shed building structure that looks more sort of futuristic. There aren't many really. It, of course, everything's aimed more at being um, it's farming related, isn't it? At the end of the day, it wasn't designed to be uh, ships to a Mars colony. Anyway. Nina did mention the rain. We haven't had any rain yet. I don't know if they've had rain where they are. Oh, turn it on. That would be a great idea. Um, I shouldn't need to cultivate either because this will give me a nice smoothed out seed bed. Yes, if we're inside the dome, it'd be interesting to see what happens with the weather. If it rains in here, have we generated our own atmosphere inside the dome that has its own weather system? Or is it just generated? to give irrigations, that would be quite cool, wouldn't it? If you had like sprinkler systems, water things running right up through the dome structure, and every so often it rains, you know, it simulates it. But I suppose you can't. Mind you, I suppose if you could control where those nozzles were dropping, you could specifically drop above the fields and not anywhere else if you wanted to. That'd be, you know, I'm not saying for, for farming, I'm, not saying for, I'm just thinking generally, I'm thinking out loud, you know the ultimate irrigation system. There's no wind in here, so it should all drop straight down, shouldn't it? But, um, yeah. So, I'm... <laughs> done what I always do. I've, I've bitten off so much. Um, this is going to take a while. I might just put all of this in a massive pile somewhere, actually. Have a huge pile of stone. I think what we'll do is we'll take it over and we'll take it to the... Um, The, uh, the the ultimate debris crusher. I'm still not sure about the sand situation. I'll have to look into that. There might be another facility we need to get built if we get the the ores, the very seven ores, because it said gold and copper ore, was it? That you then need to process those, maybe? I don't know. Or do we just ship those directly back to be, to be processed back on Earth, maybe? Because that was the whole point, wasn't it? They wanted us to extract various different minerals so we'll see if it's worth more sending it back already done then we might be better off doing that but anyway all of that being said it doesn't seem like we've done much but we really have i mean we're on a it's a big step forward with regard to getting our field sorted out and then um like i say next episode i want to make a start on the seeding planting oh, we've only got a seed we haven't got a plant have we so i can only do seed related crop types have we got a seed around planter I can't remember. Maybe. And um, and then maybe some tree planting. I'll have a look and see if we can get some uh, 
because we've got a damn con up there. I don't know if that's the only one. But no. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.